Oh, just had a lovely visit down in Dorset. I think I'm in Dorset. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Dorset, I think. Um, and it becomes apparent the more and more and more years I do this job where most of the work that's done, especially on club waters, not so much commercials, but it's just as relevant, really, the fact that near enough all the jobs that make a big difference to the productivity and the and the, um, how a lake fishes is actually most of the time got very little to do with the fish stock. Um, it's just a very easy thing for a club to ring up and buy fish, and that's all the anglers really think that needs to be done. But most of the places we go and help and that see positive changes, that's actually very little to do with that. Everyone suffers, everyone moans about cormorants and otters, but everyone, we're all in the same boat when it comes to predation these days, and everyone you know, has to suffer that. But when you make changes to the habitat and, the envir and address the environmental factors, then it, every bit of water that, um, that has these issues, it's just tr you struggle to convince anglers, that's the problem. If you left your own devices and you can get on with it, we've done this many, many, many times, and so that you can see what how things work and how things progress, and you can see results very quickly, actually. But when you're dealing with an angling club, you know that all they really want to do most of the time is buy more fish. So, But when you address issues and you can point things out and you say, well, look, we know this will help. If, and most of the time it's simple stuff, like uh, ad addressing debris and addressing water quality issues. Um, and in, in, just enhancing habitats really so yeah alright you might rip out a few old rotten trees but you're always going to replace that and make it more useful and the, the benefits are huge planting, we, the, all the things we preach I keep going on about them because they're so relevant and even more nowadays because you can see results you get results if things are done properly rather than just you know do a bit of same with swim building same with everything we do when, it, when things are bodged you look and think, well, if that's how you do the swims, if that's how you do this, then you know you're not really looking after the fish or the fishery. Um, but when you can go in and make big positive changes and big positive differences, um, and it does take a little while, and even, even in my role as director of the carp side, we've seen that happen on Horseshoe and on uh, Ashmead already, where you can go in and do stuff which you're probably going to annoy the anglers, but I've always said, you know, I'm, I'd rather upset anglers than have dead fish and I'd rather upset a few naive anglers but get on and, and get things done so that you can see results sooner and quicker and then people they never go oh yeah that was good they just stop moaning after that but all these things are really relative and it doesn't matter where I am in the country we're in Bolton we we're in Bolton in Lancashire on Monday and now I'm then down in Dorset and then next week we're all over the show it doesn't matter where you are um, wherever you go to a lake and you pinpoint what needs doing it becomes obvious to me how to improve these places. It's just getting that, it's, it's convincing angling clubs are, are more difficult to convince than, than, than private fisheries. Um, but without a doubt, you know, it's, it's seldom to do with the fish stock. Today I've looked at two venues and, all right, they both could do with netting and having a good stock assessment done. But that's not really why they're not fishing. There'll be enough fish in both, both of the venues I've looked at today. There's, there's definitely going to be enough fish in them. But if, it, if they're not feeding and they're not getting caught, and normally that's due to a number of things, predation and water quality being being high on that list, if you address those two issues, then the fishing will improve, regardless of the fish stock. It just does. But there's ways and means of going about that. Um, so it's well interesting. And, and, and if you're at, if you sat now and you're on a club or you're at a fishery where the lakes aren't fishing like you think and they keep putting fish in and it's still not working, that's why. It's, but it's understanding those things. And yes, you can read plenty of books and, and look online, but at the end of the day, it is about getting to each... Like the two waters, one's like a canal, one's a lake. Um, totally different environments. Um, and it's the same with lakes that are on the same site. You know, you can have a lake next to another one and they'll be very, very different environments, both ecologically and sort of everything. All these environmental factors play a massive part in how we would advise to get the best out of them and start realising their potential. You know, it's easy to get fish to grow. It's easy. It's easy to get fish to breed. It's easy to get good fish in. It's people that are complicated, not fish, really. You know what I mean? If you if you just left to get on with things, um, things happen really quickly and you get results. Um, but if you then have to have 12 meetings discussing it with someone and they've got an agenda where it's not really for the benefit of the club or the fish, it's just for their own agenda, you're always going to... It delays things. Or, and I've had it in the past, where people hell-bent on just restocking they don't really want to take anything on board 
but they have to because the rest of the committee have said let's let's do this but they do a half-assed job almost to prove that it doesn't work you know what i mean so they'll do a job and they'll go see we told you that wouldn't work uh, but they haven't done it properly they've, they've pissed around you know danced around the margin so to speak but yeah it's always interesting and i love doing these jobs and i love going to all different places massive massive vast lakes to tiny little ponds and canals and fisheries where money's no object to clubs that have got nothing at all and it's that's why i still love the job and that's why i love it every day when you can go and, and you can you can say to people that this is these are the changes i'd make this is why and these are the results you can expect and everything takes time and everything takes a bit of investment and everything you know the results will vary based on how it's managed after that initial work's done but yeah it's worth bearing in mind it certainly is not all about stocking fish most of the places we go i mean this just this year I think we've caught we've caught a staggering amount of fish, staggering amount of fish in January. Um, yeah, starting off down in Devon um, at Stafford Moor, we caught thousands of pounds weight of carp, catfish, silvers, crazy. And then in Lincolnshire, tons of really good quality fish. Less numbers because the lakes are smaller and there's generally bal- nice balanced fisheries there. Um, yesterday, oh, Dog Lane caught stupid amounts of fish, thousands and thousands of pounds weight. Um, one of the lakes in the Isle of Wight, thousands of thousands of pounds weight, like big numbers. And it's all well and good. And I've a couple of people have already said to me this year, it's like, oh, they're doing all right, aren't they? It's like, yeah, they are. But when you catch that, that sort of volume of fish in a lake, you can't have the attitude where you just say, well, they're all right. They're all right at the moment. We don't have to do anything. It's like, yes, but when nature takes over, because you haven't, it's cruel. And instead of losing a few fish that aren't worth anything, you'll lose a lot of valuable fish. So again, it's understanding what's going on. It's understanding each individual environment and try not to get advice from blokes down the pub and try not to get too much advice from anglers, in all honesty. Anglers, you know, there's some very, very knowledgeable, very good good anglers who will sit and catch fish where others will fail, but they don't know what's going on under the water to the extent where they just don't. And we go to a lot of places where they, they, they listen to the anglers to the point where it's ruining them, ruining them. You know, they've, they've spent money on fish they didn't have. They've borrowed money. or And those sort of situations I'm baffled by because it's like, well, why? What, oh, well, you know, the anglers tell us to do X, Y, and Z. It's like, what? what? Yeah, but... And people will say, well, the anglers are the customers and the customer always is always right. I'm like, yeah, but you're dealing with livestock. We're dealing with livestock here and we're dealing with... with uh, with, with, with quite delicate environments so you've always got to have that in the back of your mind and I certainly have you know when we're giving out advice we're not just going oh I'll just do this sometimes the job is easy from my point of view because we, we do it all the time but you've still got to be understanding and, and uh, sort of sympathetic to the environment and you can think well you can't be giving out advice that's going to damage fish stocks or potentially uh, damage the local environment or the relationship uh, that a fishery have got with the you know if they're leasing it or the landowner or an estate owner so all those things go into it um but yeah i'm gonna go home now and write all these notes up for this client and then i'm doing the same again tomorrow very tired actually should probably get a bit more sleep tonight